friends! Welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Heather and I run a small handmade business called Lemon Tree Corner where I make purses and bags and project bags for makers like you. If you've been here before, welcome back to the channel. I'm really happy to have you back. This week in the studio is going to be a little chaotic. I have uh, the colonoscopy this week, the dreaded colonoscopy. So I don't know how much I'm getting done. It's also super hot out there. So I'm hoping to finish the um, quilt front to this week. And I also have a scrapbooking day this weekend. And then as far as anything else, I don't know, turning off the power. Um, everything's just really up in the air right now. So we'll see how much I get done this week. Um, but I do have some footage from last week of sewing the quilt top together. So I will share that with you. And we'll also work on the Moroccan blanket. So let me show you where we're at with all of that. So we finally have a big giant square for the Moroccan blanket. That's the wrong way around. Okay, <laughs> here's the front. So we've got all the corners done and ready to add on those couple of border rows and do that next. Um, I should be able to work on that this week. And then I'm prepping everything for the Christmas stuff. So we're gonna do Christmas in October. So I'm getting that all ready for you and we can start the ground running on October 1st. So last week, as you would have seen, we did the quilt backing, got that all cut out and sewn together. Here's one of the seams you can see, um, not very noticeable. So I'm really hoping that that will all be great. And then my husband said, what happens if you make this whole quilt and you don't like it at all? And I'm like, well, then I guess we will have a turtle comforter because <laughs> I like the backing fabric. So we can always just turn it over and use it the other way. And then I've also started sewing the front together. So I, what I did is I took the half strips, sewed them into whole rows, and then I, I'm sewing five rows together at a time. So here's one of the five rows. And then what I will do is once I have the four sets of five rows sewn together, I'll sew all of those together. But this is taking up a lot of room. How do people do this? I don't know how people do this. Because, like, I don't, other than the bed, I don't have anywhere big enough to place these out. I had to have my husband help hold the backing fabric as I was sewing the pieces together so they weren't, like, hitting the ground and the dog hair and everything. Um, you know, I'm used to making purses, little purses. <laughs> so this is huge for me. Okay, so that's what we got going on this week. And then because we're going to be doing Christmas in October, I feel like I'm going to be missing out on fall, my favorite season. <laughs> and it's like 95 degrees outside today, so it doesn't exactly feel like fall, but we are in September. So um, I'm going to add this in for the next few weeks. I bought this cool book last year called A Poem for Every Autumn Day. And it starts on September 1st and just goes through its... It's a compilation of lots of different poets, um, some older, more traditional poets, some newer poets. So I thought I would read you a poem to get us started this week. So grab your coffee or your tea or your cold water or really cold iced tea and let's get going. Okay, so this is a poem called On the Other Side of the Door by Jeff Moss. He's an American writer, perhaps best known for his award-winning work on the children's television program, Sesame Street. Well, that's cool. He's also a writer of several collections of children's poetry. And I think it's just this one page. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. On the other side of the door. On the other side of the door, I can be a different me. As smart and as brave and as funny or strong as a person could want to be. There's nothing, to, there's nothing too hard for me to do. There's no place I can't explore because everything can happen on the other side of the door. On the other side of the door, I don't have to go alone. If you come too, we can sail tall ships and fly where the wind has flown. And wherever we go, it is almost sure we'll find what we're looking for because everything can happen on the other side of the door. That's really cute. Uh, are you into poetry? Do you, are you one of the people that like, I don't get poetry? 
is, I can be that way too sometimes. Um, I did my degree in English literature, so I really have a fondness for poetry. Uh, one of my favorite poets is still Shel Silverstein, you know, where the sidewalk ends. Um, I have a special place in my heart for children's literature, and uh, his poems always spoke to me when I was a child and still do today. Do you have a favorite poet or a favorite writer? Uh, pop it in the comments. I would love to see what you guys think, um, where your interests are. So leave it in the comments below. And as always, I would love it if you'd hit the like button. Uh, if you've seen more than one of my videos, I would love to have you subscribe to the channel. We have a lot of fun here. We are uh, growing a great community, and we'd love for you to be part of it. And then it, anything you do with the channel, like, subscribe, comment on any of the videos, really helps promote my channel because it tells YouTube that my videos are interesting and they'll suggest it to other people that watch videos like the ones that you watch. So it really helps get get me out there and I really appreciate it every time somebody comments I go oh I got a comment or I got a subscriber so it's really been wonderful and a, a big boost to me every time I see one of those a like on a video and you know it really raises my spirits every time so thank, thank you to everybody who's done that and without further ado, let's get started on this week's projects. Okay, so here we are going to start sewing the rows together. So I already sewed the half rows into whole rows, and now we need to sew those rows together. So I'm lining up the first two rows, and what I'm doing is a technique I learned from Fat Quarter Shop, which is you're nesting the seams. So what I did was I ironed the seams opposite directions for each row, so that now as I put them together, those seams are going to kind of nest together really tightly uh, and if I clip it at each of those seam points then even if the even if the fabric is a little loose in some places rather than others um, each time I get to that seam seam point uh, it'll even itself out so as long as those seams are in the correct spot then if there's a little fudging that has to happen um, in the middle of the square, it's not going to be as noticeable. So that's what I'm doing here, and then I'm going to sew the two rows together. Uh, I decided to put this in five row chunks just so that it was more manageable. And then once I get to sewing the five rows all together into 20 rows, <laughs> we'll see what happens. I'll probably have to have my husband help me um, hold it above above the uh, floor.
And now we interrupt the sewing project to add another sticker to my sewing machine. <laughs> so uh, I am a patron of several artists on YouTube and part of what that monthly support payment gets me is a postcard and a sticker designed by each of them. So I've got this collection of stickers that I'm trying to put places. <laughs> So I'm constantly trying to find space on my sewing machine to put the stickers because that's like the one place I actually use the stickers. <laughs> and here, what I'm holding here is called a stiletto tool. Uh, because the seams are now facing towards the machine, they tend to get caught and flipped. So uh, I'm using the stiletto to hold them down uh, so that they go under the machine foot properly and they don't uh, push back the other direction as we want our seams nice and flat. And I'm just gonna continue doing this row. And then I've got three rows together. I'm keeping the labels on each of the rows at this point, just so that I make sure I'm adding the next row to the correct side. Um, I did this later on, I accidentally put row six and seven together correctly and then I managed to put row eight next to row six instead of row seven. <laughs> so that one will be a little off. I decided not to undo it because I think the the patterns are mixed up enough where it's not really going to affect anything. Uh, but we'll see when we sew it all together if it messes anything up. And just going to continue like this for getting all five rows together. These clips are great. They're called, what are they called? I forget what they're called. They're just called sewing clips and, and I, you can order them on Amazon. I can link those down below. They're really great and hold everything together without poking holes like a uh, pin would. And then what I'm doing here is just ironing all the seams towards the bottom of the quilt. So all of these seams between the rows are going in the same direction. And you'll see how the other seams between all the squares are opposite. So it just kind of keeps things from getting too bulky in one place here. And I think that's it.
became a mess Don't know how I got here but I'm blessed Didn't know it take me past my destiny You're behind me with the rest Cause I'm a mess No more you Could only get better. I need it more than ever. They don't, 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 don't. Let go. Oh, you said things could only get better. I need it more than ever. They don't, don't. How can I?
Okay, and here we are continuing with the Annie's Moroccan Blanket. Uh, we've done the whole outer uh, inner square at this point, and we just have to add a border to that. And uh, that's what the videos look like. It's a little confusing here because we've kind of pieced all these pieces together with the color work and the squares. And even though this is just a single crochet stitch here, uh, we kind of got to space them out a certain way and fudge it so that we have an exact amount of a foundation to start with because everything else is going to rely on this foundation. So, you know, count three times, um, went through <laughs> and redid things and moved things around until um, I was getting it to the right number of stitches. Okay, so you can see here I just figured out that this whole corner is done wrong. It's supposed to be like this one with the raised on the front. And I was just going to keep going and fudge it, but now's the time to change it. If I'm going to change it, now would be the time. And it looks bad too because you can tell it's the wrong side. So I have to find my ends that I weaved in and take this apart. No time like the present. Okay, so here I am taking it out. Uh, if I sound frustrated, it's because I chose to work on this project during prep day before the colonoscopy, and I have not eaten anything all day at this point, and um, frustrated and hungry, and starting the uh, prep which means I have to go to the bathroom every 10 seconds. So I'm not in a great mood. Uh, I thought this would be a nice distraction, something to really concentrate on, counting stitches and focusing on this to avoid focusing on uh, my anxiety over the procedure and just the, the prep work and everything. Um, I managed to sew those on wrong again. I don't know how I managed that, but uh, I did. So here we are on the second row of the border, which is a cluster kind of puff stitch, which um, looks really nice. You can see in a minute, it looks really nice. And then we did um, just a regular single crochet in the darker color for the last row here. And that's just me forgetting a stitch. I had to go back and add it in there. So here you can see, oh, we got to wind up things first before the big reveal. Got to sew in my ends. I'm pretty good about sewing in my ends as I go. Uh, it's a lot easier than trying to do them a million ends at <laughs> later date. Okay, so now the big reveal. So see, it's just like a nice cluster stitch all the way around. It's a nice texture border there. And now we're moving on to the corner squares. Uh, so these are gonna be in the four corners before we do the, uh, the inner squares in the next kit. So here I am starting that. Now they didn't give us the color we're starting with in the latest kit. So here I'm starting to get confused. Um, I picked the yellow color, but I'm figuring out that that's probably not the right color. I don't know what color I'm doing. Frick. These are the colors that were in the latest bundle. And peach sand is not one of them. Spice is here. That's the next one. I mean, I was going to use the yellow, but and she's using peach sand, which looks more like this color. So I guess I've got the wrong color going on here. Okay. I'd have to look back. Or whatever kit that was that we did the corners. Find out what color that was.
that was saffron is the yellow. Okay, so I think this one's correct. So saffron is the yellow, which means I gotta go to this one. Okay, friends, that's it for this week. Thank you for joining me. Uh, let's take a look at the progress we made this week. We got the Moroccan blanket was the majority of what I did besides the um, scrapbooking. So let's take a look at that. Uh, kind of a very interesting border here that we've got with this um, crinkle edge or bobble edge going on so that's really cool so we've got this border all done all the way around and I started on the corner squares uh, didn't didn't get to filming much of that before I got frustrated but here's what the corner square looks like so far it's got a few more rows on it and then it's just kind of this weird I just called it circus tent when I was making it but as you added more of the background blue it looks more interesting now and less circus, circus tenty than it did to start with. <clears throat> and other than that, my colonoscopy procedure went well. Uh, my sister suggested that I make a separate video talking about that. So I think I'll do that for any of you who are scared about getting your first colonoscopy, want to know more about the process in depth, so to speak. Uh, I'll just make a short video about that because I think it would be helpful uh, for those of you who haven't done it before to just kind of quell your anxiety a little bit. I am I was very anxious about the whole thing, put it off for a year, and I, you know, I wish I had just done it, gotten it done with a year ago, um, but c'est la vie, so <laughs> this is where we're at, and I have a follow-up appointment, so not quite sure what any of it means, but at least I've knocked it out, gotten it done, and I feel relieved to not have that hanging over my head anymore. Uh, so I'll make a short video in case you're interested, and that way it's it's separate if you want to watch it. So, Other than that, we have our poem that I was going to read to you from this book, A Poem for Every Autumn Day. Today's poem comes to us from Brian Patton and pays homage to the works of children's literature. The secret garden will never age. The tangled undergrowth remains as fresh as when the author put down her pen. Its mysteries are as poignant now as then. Though time's a thief, it cannot thieve one page from the world of make-believe. On the track, the railway children wait Alice still goes back and forth through the glass. In Tom's midnight, garden time unfurls, and children still discover secret worlds. At the gates of dawn, Pan plays his pipes, Mole and Ratty still afloat in awe downstream. 
the weasels watch hidden in the grass. No one cares how quickly human years pass. Though time's a thief, it cannot thieve one page from the world of make believe. And that's it. So thank you for joining me this week. Um, I hope you had fun. I did a little more voiceover. I've been asked to explain things more or just talk more um, instead of the captions. So I'll try and incorporate that in a little more. I just, I feel kind of weird because I record the voiceover as I'm watching the video. <laughs> it just, it's kind of a weird thing to make them match up. But I'll, I'll make an effort to do that more, especially as we go into the next things of trying these new things together. Um, I'll explain them a little more. And with that, I hope you have a wonderful week ahead, and I will see you next week. Love you. Bye.